the debt problem in America is so outrageous right now and I feel like people aren't talking about it. And I'm not talking about the national debt or the debt ceiling, I'm talking about consumer debt and the fact that 61% of Americans are finding themselves in credit card debt. And I'm not credit card debt just for big luxury items, but for actual living expenses. And this is due to a lot of various factors like inflation, reduced hours at work, having to carry multiple jobs to make ends meet. And so if this is you, this video is all about how to tackle debt and how to use your home equity as a possible solution. Now, if you're new to the channel, uh, my name is Lizzie Hofer. I'm a residential loan officer at Cross Country Mortgage, and I like to teach practical money tips so you can make smart money moves. Four months now, we have been talking about how crazy resilient the economy is. It's been like the terminator when it comes to spending. I mean, you can take down people's wages, you can have them have multiple jobs, you can double the costs of the goods and services, and they are still spending. In fact, when you look at the data, it's alarming. In fact, we are more than $48 billion more in debt than we were last quarter, taking it over a trillion dollars in credit card debt. We are now seeing record numbers of people using like digital wallets like Apple Pay and Google Pay and Shopify and increased numbers with the buy now, pay later programs like Affirm. I mean, it is no surprise that we are in historical debt. And it's sad to think that like at the peak in COVID in 2021, we saw $1.9 trillion in savings and we're seeing that depleted by over a billion dollars. If you find yourself in debt right now, know that you are not alone. In fact, I personally have had to rein in my spending, especially after going through a divorce, really just figuring out, hey, I don't need to buy all of these things that are so easy to buy because because I'm being infiltrated full of ads. And so I want to just talk about a couple things that you can do to really help you in your spending and then what you might be able to do with potentially some of this home equity line of credit. I want to cover a couple of tactical budget things because I think that the more mindful you can be on your spending, the less you'll actually spend. So the first thing is to really tackle a budget, really define where your money is going. You want to look back anywhere between three and six months, and figure out how much you're actually spending and you'll go through credit cards and you'll go through your bank statements. And what you want to do is break things down into four categories. So your survival expenses are anything housing, anything that will take you to and from work, anything food related that you need to survive. And then you will have minimum debt payments. So this is anything reported on a credit card, any money that you owe. So these will be your minimum debt payments for credit cards, student loans, auto loans, any personal lines of credit. And then you will have your maintenance fees. So what does it take to maintain your household, repairs on your house, repairs on your car, gym fees, subscriptions, things that maintain your lifestyle. And then the last is discretionary spending. Discretionary spending is typically the easiest to reduce. And I would really look at subscriptions, guys. <laughs> the average person has somewhere around like $1,400 in annual subscriptions. I mean, that's an easy place to just reduce quickly and then maybe apply that to an additional credit card to maybe reduce your fees, but it's a good place to start looking. And then once you have your budget set, you want to review that budget twice a month. So my day are the 15th and the 30th. On the 15th, I'm making sure that half of my bills are paid for the month at that point. 30th, I'm reconciling all my spending for the month and then I'm casting a forecast. The reason that I do this is because I want to be mindful is if I'm on track or not for my spending and if I have made any unnecessary purchases or did I have unnecessary expenses come up or surprise expenses and what am I doing proactively to make up for this? And then I will also tell you that what has really helped me reduce my spending is I took off DoorDash from my and uber eats from my phone i took off my digital wallet so anytime i want to make a purchase i have to go physically grab my credit card which believe it or not that minor discomfort of having to go get my actual wallet has prevented me from making so many purchases. And then I will only shop on Amazon like twice a month because I want to really think about the purchases. So I will go ahead and add things to my cart. And then when I'm doing my shopping semi-monthly, I'll look at it and I'm like, okay, I don't really need half of these items. And then I have a running list in my household for grocery items. And I tend to splurge on an Instacart, even though it is a premium delivery service because it actually saves me money from going to the grocery store. So I am one of those people that if I walk down an aisle and I see something, I'll buy it. And so not going to the grocery store, believe it or not, for me is will help me save more money. These are the tactical things I want you guys to be mindful for in your budget, especially going into next year, that'll help you be successful. Now, the next thing I want to tackle is how do we reduce debt? So in a budget plan, if you can 
live your life on 70% of your net take home income, this is going to give you 30% to be able to save an emergency fund and pay down debt. So this is the same system that I used to get out of debt when I was in my early 20s. And it's actually a lot of the principles I use now, especially after going through a divorce, I found myself in a little bit of debt and then I had to sell my house and really get my budget in line. Essentially, if you can live off 70% of your net take home income, you have 20% to use towards debt balance reductions and then 10% to go to an emergency fund until you have three to 12 months of survival, maintenance, and discretionary spending in the bank, depending on your lifestyle. I mean, some people just need like three to six months. Other people, I like to have 12 months of my living expenses in the bank just because I don't like my lifestyle to be too altered. And I just, I like to have that, that safety net. That'll be a personal decision for you. The other thing that you need to do is really go through all of your debt payments and start calculating which ones have the highest debt and the ones typically with the highest debt you want to tackle first but one of the best ways to pay off debt psychologically is actually to focus on the one that you can pay off soonest and then snowball that payment into the next one which will help you reduce your debt and so what i mean by this is sometimes you look at all of your debt payments you categories which ones are the highest interest and then you look at what the payments are to the balances and the ones that you can pay off in less than 10 months are the ones you want to focus on first because those are the ones that will allow you to use whatever those minimum payments are to apply to the next debt that can be paid off sooner. So there's a variety of different strategies on this. I know Dave Ramsey is like lowest bill first, and there's a lot of economists that really talk about the highest interest. For me, I have found that I get the best bang for my buck when I focus on the debt payments that I can concentrate on with the biggest impact to my budget within 10 months or less. You'll definitely want to look at that and we can do another budget video, like something more in depth in another video. Let me know in the comments below if you'd like that. If you find yourself in debt right now and you are the owner of a house, one of the options that you can do is get a line of credit. So that's called a HELOC or you can do a cash out refinance. And I know it sounds kind of bananas to do either one of those. People don't really like to tap into their home equity, but I will tell you that a home equity line of credit is oftentimes dramatically less than what you're paying in credit card. Um, I just did a brief glance and this is as of November 20th and interest rates for a line of credit were anywhere between eight to 11%. And I know that sounds high, but when you compare it to a credit card that is in the high double digits, anywhere from like 18 to 24%, you're paying dramatically less interest and it's amortized over 10, 20 to 30 years, which can dramatically reduce your overall cash expenses when compared to all of those minimum debt payments. Now, a, the way a line of credit works is that it's typically a second mortgage on your house because most people have a primary mortgage. And what you're doing is you're using some of that equity between the principal balance on the first mortgage and what the house is worth. A lot of times you can go up to 80 to 90% depending on the bank and depending on your occupancy and credit and all those things, just know that this is not a quote, this is an idea of what you can do with your home equity. And it's just like a mortgage loan, you're gonna provide financial like bank statements, paycheck stubs, uh, W-2s and tax returns, and they will run a credit report and probably get an appraisal. Just expect anywhere between 30 and 45 days, but it is a really great way for you to reduce debt and reduce interest. Now they are typically variable, which means that the interest rate can fluctuate every single month. And a lot of times you're paying an interest only payment, which means you're not dipping into principal. So you are gonna have to look at the schedule of payments to really figure out what's gonna reduce that balance because you do wanna get out of debt. And I do think that this is a really great option for many Americans who don't wanna touch their first mortgage because they might have 4% or lower interest rate. Home equity underwriting and credit scores can be a little bit more conservative than what you would get with a traditional mortgage. And so oftentimes I find that clients don't don't typically qualify for their desired amount right off the bat and you have to realize this is a secondary mortgage and that you know whenever you fall on hard times god forbid you would foreclose that first mortgage has priority in getting paid off and so there is higher risk to a second mortgage so if you find yourself in a position where you maybe didn't qualify for a home equity line of credit you might still consider doing a cash out refinance and I know that it sounds bananas to give up your 4% interest rate and trade it in for a 7% interest rate. But when we're talking about debt payments, you have to consider what your overall blended rate is for all of your debt payments. And in the recession, we saw that 
especially with vehicles, the cost of a car became super inflated. And so I am seeing people on a regular basis that have auto loans that are the same as what somebody used to pay in a mortgage payment. So anything over like $1,200, $1,500 a month. And those interest rates are, you know, eight to 9%. And then when you factor in their 18 to 24% credit cards and then their student loans, I mean, a lot of people are paying a blended overall interest rate, somewhere close to seven to 8%. So the benefits of doing a cash out refinance in this area is one, you will be paying lesser interest for some of that debt, but you'll also be able to amortize it over 30 years. And a lot of times the cash flow that it provides you in terms of the reduction of monthly debt payments is great enough where if you applied that savings to your mortgage, you are still having a reduced mortgage term way less than 30 years. So your overall total interest that you pay is not quite the same as if you kept that 30 year mortgage at seven and a half percent. Just know that there are some benefits for still doing a cash out refinance, especially if you find yourself in a lot of debt. Now, my team would love to help you guys just kind of review your budgets, review your spending and determine whether or not, you know, a cash out refinance makes sense for you. We also, I'm going to include a link to the home equity line of credit department at our company in case this is something that you want to look into. But guys, if you find yourself into debt, there is no shame about restructuring so you can put the best financial foot forward for your future. We want to have strong 2024s and it really does start with being intentional about our spending and as uncomfortable as it looks like really getting into that budget, really figuring out where we can be improving in our spending and just overall in our earning. And so I'm going to keep kind of pounding these types of themes into the channel next year because I really believe that the more cash flow you have, the better opportunities you'll have for making investments, the less anxiety you'll have about more income generating opportunities in your future. So guys, let me know what questions you have in the comments below. I'm super excited to break this down in 2024. We're going to be going over a lot more money strategy, a lot more investment strategy. I'll be even including some of my entrepreneurial journey with developing the app for smart sense. And then we have some cool merch coming down with billion dollar babe. So I'm excited for you guys to join me. Really appreciate you. And if you like this video, don't forget to like comment and subscribe.